and it is uh, still the day after that all important uh, decision that was taken by ANC members in Parliament and that was to vote against the adoption of the Palapala report. Let's remind you that uh, 214 MPs voted against instituting uh, this particular committee that would ultimately uh, form part of what would be a, an impeachment committee and this would possibly remove President Saul Ramaphosa. Well, that has now been thwarted. Most of the ANC members towing the party line. However, Musa Benzizwane, Mervyn Dirks, Supramao Mabelo and Dr. Nkosazana Lamini Zuma choosing to vote for the adoption of this report. Well, one of those members joins me now, Dr. Nkosazana Lamini Zuma. Thank you very much for your time. Let us into that moment when you took that decision to vote Yes. What were the compelling, compelling reasons for you? Well, there, there are a number of reasons. Um, first of all, the, the decision that the NEC took on the 5th of December, there were a number of people who were supposed to speak, who were on the list, who had been called that they were going to speak, and I was one of them. And somehow the, the chair decided to stop the meeting when there were still about 20-something people to speak. Who was chairing the meeting? Now, the national chair of the ANC. All right. Now, in the ANC, the policy is that you debate matters. You get a chance to speak, you debate, you debate, and then a decision is taken. That's the first thing. It's, a, it's an alien practice in the ANC that a meeting is stopped in the middle of the debate and a decision is taken when other people have not been given the chance to express themselves. Mm. And I did go to the leadership at that meeting after the meeting had been stopped, to say this is wrong. How do you expect us? What decision has been taken when other people have, n have not been able to express themselves? That's number one. Mm. Number two, the report, well, let me say number two, is that in Parliament you are discharging a responsibility as a public representative which is a, a, a responsibility you take, you take an oath, and you say you will protect the Constitution. Mm. That's fine. But the instruction that comes from the ANC comes after a debate. There was no debate. Other people spoke. Others were not allowed. That's the most important. The second, the report does not say we must remove the president. I think it's wrong to say it was to remove the president. The report was instituted by parliament, appointed a panel of three legal people, two judges and an, an advocate. It's chaired by a very renowned former Chief Justice and it doesn't say the President is guilty. Yeah. And they were not asked to say whether the President is guilty or not. Are you able, please could you allow me to, to pick up on one of the important may areas I, you've mentioned? May I just finish my thoughts there? Right, no problem. And they were not asked to say whether the president is guilty or not, and they didn't say he's guilty. Mm. So the report does not say he's guilty. The report does not say he's going to be removed. All the report says is that there is a case to answer, which means there are questions that still need to be answered. And if you do look at the report, I read it very carefully, just on what they say on what the president had said himself. There are questions. That's all that the report says.
So I, I wasn't voting to remove the president. I was just agreeing to the report that the, pres the, the parliament instituted. All right. Can I pick up on the meeting that you say allowed certain members to speak and disallowed others, and instead the session was ended by the chairperson. At this NEC meeting, and it's important for viewers to be taken along here, Dr. Kosasana Jlaminizuma, we all know we're talking about a divided house in the ANC. So when you say those who were given the latitude to speak, which camp do they fall into? Is it those that we in the media would say favor President Ramaphosa for re-election, or is it those that move in a different direction? No, I would be dishonest if I said that. I don't know. I don't uh, judge. I don't know which people would have said what on the report. Hmm. So I can't say they were in one camp or another camp. No. And so I can't say I can't say that. But I I did feel strongly that we were not the list was not finished and I also did not speak. And I did express this to the leadership. So if you ask them, at least the three of them, they will say that I did go to them and I did say what I'm saying. And so these were the compelling circumstances that pushed you to take this decision. And, you know, some people... Well, I said there are two. It's not just that one. Yes. The other one is that it's a report in Parliament that we were asked, the Parliament instituted a report, a, 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 co a commission or a committee chaired by, very, chaired by a very eminent judge, our former justice, chief justice. And it wasn't to remove the president, it was to allow the president to clear his name, to just say what questions that they, ha they have to answer those questions. Yeah. Doctor so, so it wasn't to remove the president. It was to give the president a chance to answer those questions. That's how I understand it. Yeah. There are reports this morning on the back of that meeting in Parliament, outside of the steps there, the chairperson of the ANC, Gwede Mantashe, is interviewed by journalists. And I just want to quote quickly what he says. And I quote now, if I'm a member of the ANC and I don't want to comply with the rules of the ANC, then I'm tired of being a member of the ANC. It's not about expulsion, but I am opting out of the ANC. What do you read into those comments? I don't know. I can only comment on my own attitude. I am a member of the ANC. I joined the ANC when I was, when I was still young. I will remain a member of the ANC. I'm not tired of being a member of the ANC. If I was tired of being a member of the ANC, probably I wouldn't be where I am. I'm not tired of being a member of the ANC. I actually am a very disciplined member of the ANC. I am a very disciplined member of the ANC, a very loyal member of the ANC. But I don't know about a rule that says you can't express your view in Parliament. I don't know where that rule is, uh, especially because we were not voting on a motion of removing the president. Mm. We were voting to say whether we agree with the report, a report that Parliament itself had asked for. And I read the report and I did not disagree with the report. That's what my vote was about. It's not about disagreeing with the ANC, no. Okay.
All right. I was saying I do not disagree with the report. I agree with the report. All right. Dr. Lamine Zuma, let me ask you to pause there for a moment. We're going to take a break. We're going to continue this conversation. If you're just joining us, we are in conversation with uh, ANC, NEC member and cabinet member, Dr. Nkosazana Lamini Zuma. It's on the back of the decision she took in Parliament yesterday, and that was to vote in favour of this panel report being adopted by Parliament. And Dr. Lamini Zuma, thank you very much for staying on with us. I want us to pace this up a little bit now. So you've explained why you took the decision you did. If you listened carefully to uh, one of the members who also voted yes to this report, she mentioned first, this is the member Maambe Shala. she mentioned first that she is voting with the party line. And the understanding is that the party line was for ANC caucus members to vote against the adoption of this report. There are those who are saying you went against the party line. How do you respond to that? Well, I, I was in Parliament. The question was, there is a report in front of us. Do you agree with it or you don't? And I said I agree because I did not find anything that I can fault in the report. Secondly, party line, democratic centralism, which is party line, you first debate the issues. You get a chance to debate the issues. Mm. And when you have debated the issues, then the conclusion is what you form. But when you haven't debated the issues, when, when it's, it's unprecedented times where you, you, you are not allowed to debate, it's unprecedented in the ANC. Was a it party explained line to you comes why? From a debate. Party line comes from a debate. Was it explained to you uh, why there was no debate? No, they haven't. As I say, I did go to them and said this is wrong. And you, you, you can't say there is an instruction or a party line when people haven't debated. All right. And that leads me to a question about what's your view then? If there wasn't a debate in the ANC structures, what's your view of the members who voted not to adopt this report? Let's start with those, because there are those no, who I can't talk to for other, I can't talk for other people. You must ask them what their views are. Why should I talk about them? All right. So you're not going to talk about the ones who voted against this adoption of this report. Let's talk about those No, I thought you wanted to talk to me about my, my position. I didn't know that you want me to talk about other people, and I don't <laughs> think it's my call. Well, it's an opportunity. I, we are trying to understand the thinking of not just yourself, but ANC members. Because if you're saying there I was no debate in ANC structures, then that's hugely problematic. There are those who absented themselves. Again, I take it you're saying you're not going to speak for them either. No, I, I think I shouldn't really speak for other people. All right. I'm not saying, I'm saying, I'm not saying there was no debate at all. There were some people who were allowed to speak, but there were some that did not speak. Hmm. So let's just get that clear. Okay, all right. Which is unprecedented. Now, there are people who obviously are going to say, my goodness, a cabinet member, who's also a party member, has voted for a debate or a, an, an adoption of a report that would, if it were to come to that, ultimately impeach the president. I know you have said repeatedly that this was not a vote about impeaching the president. This was simply to open the discussion around what actually happened. Let's hear the facts. So let's talk about your 
stance then inside cabinet. Are you still comfortable serving in this cabinet led by President Ramaphosa? Um, I serve at his behest. And we'll see. What does that mean? We will see. We'll see. Do you still want to serve? Depends. <laughs> what does it depend on? <laughs> um, it depends. Just wait. Should I see. should I make the assumption because again I don't want to I don't, I don't want to make assumptions. Should I mm. conclude that you are ready to resign from this cabinet? Is that what I'm supposed to read into that, or are you waiting to be fired? Ask me that question in January. I'll answer. You. There are those people who say previously your statements to party members as a leader is that you have always advocated for ANC discipline. You have always advocated for people to follow the rules of the party. And what you did yesterday is something that is unforgivable. For example, the chairperson of Mpumalanga, he tweeted as such to say, doing what some members did in Parliament. He didn't mention you by name, but doing what some of you did yesterday was unforgivable. In fact, that tweet is up as I speak to you. If I could just extrapolate from it, he says, voting against your party line is an unforgivable offence and an application for expulsion. I will always have high regard to those who act responsibly. That's Mandanlovo, the chairperson of the ANC in Pumalanga. How do you respond to his comments? I explained to you, party line is two-way. You are given a chance to debate, you are given a chance to vote or to toe the line. It's not one way. Secondly, um, if, you, if, you, if you look at what has happened in the past? It's not the first time that this has happened. Hmm. It has happened before. Nobody has been expelled. So I think it's important that we must be consistent as the organization. And so if you are disciplined as a result of your actions yesterday, that is something you are going to fight. Yes, because nobody has been disciplined before. Who has, who has been disciplined before? There, there is a question about, and I'm glad you mentioned the, or you make reference to previous experiences. Former President Jacob Zuma, as you will know, would have faced many motions of no confidence. What was different about how matters were handled this time? And just out of interest, when that time came for ANC caucus members to vote whether for the motion of no confidence against the president or against which way did you go? There was no motion of no confidence yesterday. I'm talking about the previous experiences. I'm saying there was no motion of no confidence yesterday. So you can't compare yesterday and other times. And so you're not going to give us a window into what your decision making was from previous experiences where motions were brought in Parliament against a sitting president of the ANC. There was no motion yesterday, so why are you asking about a motion of no confidence when, the, when there is a motion of no confidence against the sitting president? Hmm. 
you will ask me that question depending on how I vote. Dr. Ngosazana Lamini Zuma, I'm not going to beat about the bush. I have to ask you these questions so that people understand why it is that in the ANC there clearly is a stifling of debate if and when it is comfortable for certain members to do so because that's what you are saying here that the debate was stifled around this discussion so my question to you now relates to the experiences where former president Jacob Zuma faced a number of motions of no confidence and ordinary South Africans would want to know what is different about this president and what you did yesterday versus what you did against another president of the ANC because that's what we want to know let us in yeah, in your thinking I, I, I think what 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 is important is that previously I don't um, I don't remember I've been in the NEC I don't remember a time when people were not allowed to debate hmm. I don't remember but of course there was a time I was not here uh, between 2012 and 2017 I came back to Parliament hmm. I came back to the country in 2017 I, but maybe it happened, I don't know. But I don't remember a time when people were not allowed to debate. Because you see, if, if there are 80 people who are on the list to speak, I'm just taking you through. If there are 80 people on the list to speak, hmm. and you stop at 50-something, and maybe 30 are saying yes, 20 are saying no. Why do you stop when there are still 20-something people who have to speak? Is it because you, you are not sure that if they all speak, which way will it go mm. or not? So I think it's important to make a difference that you debate issues in the ANC. That's very important. You debate issues, and when you have debated and you've been given a chance to debate, the conclusion that is reached, you all follow. But if we are going to allow a situation where debate is stifled in the ANC, then how do you then have conclusions that need to be followed by everybody? Is it not true also, though? That it's unprecedented in my experience in the NEC. You know, one time we debated till four in the morning on something. This meeting was stopped around six or so. Abruptly. Why? You know, ANC is an organization that taught us that you debate issues. You debate and debate and debate, and you come to a conclusion. Once you have debated and debated and come to a conclusion, you all follow that conclusion. But if we are going to allow this kind of unprecedented action, where a debate is stifled, and yet you are expected to follow when you haven't even expressed yourself it will be killing the ANC it will kill the ANC can I just ask you this question previous briefings post NEC meetings we would be told that a consensus was reached are you telling us that in this meeting no such words were used instead the session was simply shut and an instruction was given that vote against the adoption of this report. Yeah, in the middle of the debate, we were told, let's give you a glimpse of the summer. 
and and we said glimpse of a summary when the the meeting is still on and and, and it was said no it's not a summary it's a glimpse of the summary so we thought oh okay then the, that glimpse of a summary was given and i remember when the, the then the the chair said no then can we close the meeting at this point I went to the mic and I think even Zueli went to another mic and, and, and somebody else to say, no, but this meeting is not finished. You have not finished the list. Hmm. But that was the end of the meeting. It ended very abruptly. Dr. Lamini Zuma, let me, I'm winding it down. Um, uh, let me put this to you. I, I, again, you leave me in no man's land on the question about whether or not you are still comfortable serving under this president. And I'm bringing this up again simply because... You know, you know to, why? Yes. You, you know what? The, the debate yesterday was not about removing the president. It was about accepting a report that allows the president to clear his name. And so, in your view, because of that, this president will continue leading not just the ANC, but the country under a cloud. That's what you are saying, because you are saying that an opportunity for him to clear his name was squandered in Parliament yesterday. Is that effectively what you're saying? Yes, we should, we should give him the opportunity to clear his name. I don't know whether the review that uh, he's taking the report under will ask question, those questions that the report is talking about. I'm not a lawyer, mm. so I don't know whether that will happen. But I, I do think that the president would be better off. I said this before, that it would have been better if the president had answered and taken us into confidence even before the report came because i just think it would help all of us if he had just answered whatever the questions that the the panel had and that's why uh, I'm, and that's why i'm going to take one last chance at asking the question are you still comfortable serving under this president well, even even no, whether I was going to resign or not, I don't discuss that in the media. Mm. So don't don't try and push me into that. Uh, because I was appointed by him, not in the me through the media. So I don't want to discuss that with you in the media. Dr. Lamini Zuma, let me thank you very much for your time and. Thanks indeed for leveling with us, even though certain areas you clearly did not want us uh, to go there. But uh, let me thank you indeed sincerely for your time. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you. All right.